Okay, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining this evening. I have a fortunate position of being here to talk to you about the Cyber Arts Programme. Uh, all the artwork that you'll see within this presentation has been made by our students, or a few by our partners as well. It's an enriched program in traditional and digital technology. You can see some of the areas uh, that we focus on within here, as well as some video game design work by one of our graduates and one of our grade nines last year, a more traditional art piece that you would find. Here are some of the highlights and facilities that we have. It's already been mentioned, the amazing facilities at Northview. It is one of the largest schools within the TDSB and the range of courses which benefits all our programs and the range of facilities which benefits all students. Uh, you can see one of our cyber art studios with the lab adjoining it. So we have the traditional side and then the digital side. Um, we also have one of the benefits everybody's mentioned is the community and the graduates. This is one of our recent graduates who's now studying architecture at Ryerson, coming back and giving some advice for our current students, as well as work by grade 10 students. And one of our partnerships that we shifted to online last year, uh, it's Cassette Marketing, one of the largest marketing companies in Canada. So I mentioned community, and this is a really good example of that. When things shut down a couple of years ago, when we went home for learning, um, we couldn't have our usual celebration of cyber arts. And this was put together by the students, an interactive yearbook celebrating their four years in the program. It's a really good example of the kinds of creative thinking that we foster, but also the kinds of students that we get within there. It has the added bonus as well as it was created using software developed by a graduate of the cyber arts program. And it's actually used uh, for estate agents when they're selling houses and they're showing their neighborhoods but it was adapted by students within that placement. And you can see many of the events and field trips that we, that we go on with the students. The company's called Studio, a former graduate. So if we talk about Canada's creative economy and the creative industries, it's actually a huge industry within Canada, about 12.9% of the workforce. It's actually larger than the US and Canada. So I can't stress how, enough how if this is your interest there are jobs there are career paths uh, for you as well as education paths uh, we recently actually last week launched an, uh, one of our cassette events and now the grade 11 students in our new art of business course are producing some briefs based on real um, real briefs that were given to them by some of their companies you may have seen their recent sick kids commercial and so they've been talking to our students about how they produce that and it's not just artists they're looking for they're looking for a whole range of students and one of the of, uh, of people in the careers. One of the reasons they're reaching back to us is our good reputation, but also um, they're wanting, they need people in the workforce. They're trying to inspire people. A new partnership for us this year is Toon Boom. About 70% of the animations you will see on TV uses it, things like Rick and Morty, as well as movies as well. You can see some here. So that just started this year, which is really exciting. Saying that about the amazing uh, opportunities in the creative industries, it's actually fair to say that most of our students don't actually go into creative fields. Um, you get about 37%, but vast majority going into mm -hmm. other areas. Science is actually really popular. I think that's down to the open-minded nature of our students, the inquisitive nature, as well as a growing area is business studies. Um, and you can see even students, especially students that go into other areas, these are some recent uh, Emails I've had back from our graduates, they're great at staying in touch, talking about even though the top one is studying health sciences, somebody always needs a graphic designer and it's really grown her network. This I got just this September as a student started at engineering at University of Waterloo and they were doing still life drawing, problem solving, lateral thinking and the creative process. Creative process and problem solving is something that we talk about in all our lessons daily. Other graduates have gone on to work in software design, in the movies. I do like to watch the credits at the end of movies to see if we can see any of our graduates in there. Now there's a number of pathways through the program because we don't expect students to make up their mind in grade eight what they want to go on to do. And there's a lot of flexibility built into the course. The, as people will join in, you're committed, you're committing, sorry, to two programs, two in grade nine, 10, 11, and 12, one with a visual art focus and one with a more technology focus. Uh, 
Um, if you choose to, when you get into grade 11 and 12, you can take cyber honors, which is taking co-op, which is getting work experience. So taking advantage of some of the wonderful connections that we have. Just last year, we launched the Creative Center Schism. The majority of students going through the cyber program are actually doing a significant number of the specialist high skills major uh, factors, some of the areas that you have to do. And so it's not, if people want to be more career focused, uh, gaining experiences and qualifications, certifications in um, things like Photoshop, in After Effects, or even our new Toon Boom software that is then recognized on CVs. We had our first graduates last year, and one of them while doing this was actually working on animations for Netflix while completing her high school. This is what it looks like in terms of courses. In grade nine, you'll actually see that too means that the students are actually taking a grade 10 class. So they're reaching ahead, they're being challenged to take those classes. And our ASM 2OP is a media course that really introduces students to the technology that they're gonna be using in grade 10. In grade 10, you see the three in AVI three, which means it's a grade 11 course. This allows some of the flexibility I was talking about. Students can then in grade 11, if they choose to, this is one of the optional things we have, take grade 12 visual art, actually reaching ahead and getting those college and university credits early. We have about five or six students will choose to do that every year. Uh, we also have the optional art of business course, and that will tie into things like the schism. When we get specifically into grade 12, we have a few students that choose to do the four credit, which is all day work experience or two credit. And there's getting going into companies like radio stations. Uh, we've had people in law firms doing website design, um, as well as working for graphic designers, animators. And one of the things that I showed you earlier, because of the amazing facilities, some students choose to take more art and more technology courses and take advantage of those facilities, our pottery studio, photography studio, drawing studio, as well as the printmaking studio and our year round gallery. So I really am fortunate to work in such a facility. Here's some examples of our grade nine work. So we introduced the new animation school of excellence straight away in grade nine. And you can see two of our grade nine students using our new Cintiq tablets with the Toon Boom software. And as well as that, we uh, the foundation is always that traditional art. Uh, we had a question earlier about, do you have to have a high level of skill of drawing skill to get into that program, into the program. Uh, we need to know that you have a level of skill that you will be successful, um, but I would value enthusiasm all the way through above that. Somebody who's open-minded and willing to learn, willing to try lots of different things, different technology, different media as they go through high school. Here are some grade 10 examples and those that were here at the beginning, you will have seen part of this technology video. Um, the ComTech program starts in grade 10, goes 11, 10, 11, and 12. And that's where students are doing things more like web design and programming and robotics. And you can see some of the uh, facilities down here, as well as some of our traditional and digital work from those courses. In grade 12, this is an example of uh, it's a website that one of the students created, a career-focused website. And they actually use this website to see some of their work from grade 10, 11, and 12 on this page. And they use this to help them get their uh, job placement. And they actually took a job placement at an architecture firm and has now gone on. I think the student is now in their third year of architecture. Uh, another of our partners is Playfight. It's a former graduate who credits the co-op program as being something that opened his eyes to what he could achieve with his skills. Um, and now he accepts students. He splits his time between Hollywood and, and LA doing video effects production. And this was, I showed earlier the video, the interactive yearbook. Well, here you can see how it's actually used. And we have some of our students placed here doing the animations. So if you're looking for a house in a certain neighborhood and want to explore the neighborhood, this is sort of a digital way you can do that. And as I mentioned before, this was started by one of our graduates. We have an extensive growing list of partners. 
with Cassette Marketing Studio, Rias and Seneca is new this year as well. We're introducing what's called a dual credit in animation. So students in grade 12 can be getting a, a high school credit at the same time as doing a college credit. So really reaching ahead at that point. Uh, we've had a number of recent presentations from the film industry dealing with anything from sound and music to actually working on and building sets. Here are some of the field trips that we've had for the creative center schism and our regular program as well. Things like the Ontario Skills Contest, actually going to the marketing agency, filming and getting talks from professionals, many who used to go through the program. Field trips and guest artists to the Art Gallery of Ontario, to the zoo, to Reptilia, so that students can get some first-hand drawing experience. We even had a puppet maker in recent years. And this was our regular cyber art celebration of their four years within the program. So they have their own graduation for that as well. If you go to the website, the application form is on now. We have the cyber arts website. It can also be found on the Northview website. So the application deadline is December the 10th. So you need to get that digital form in the Northview form by that date. Um, the portfolio can actually come in after that. So we want to be scanned or, or just photographed, photograph it well. Five to eight artworks, a variety of artworks, things you've done in school, hopefully things you've done at home as well. They don't all have to be polished and finished. We're looking for ideas as much as we're looking for skill. Sketchbooks are something I really like to see, all of us when we're looking through the portfolios. Um, we have interviews that are taking place online this year. Um, from the 24th to the 28th of January. And it's for a chance for us to really get to know the student. The portfolio doesn't always tell us everything, but it's a really good starting point for a conversation. Uh, about a week before that date, we have an art challenge that the students are sent as well. So we get a real uh, view of their problem solving skills. If you want to see more of the work, there's some on the website, as well as our Instagram page. Uh, we've been posting some this week, so you can see some really up-to-date stuff as it comes in. Okay, that's uh, my short presentation for the Cyber Arts program. I know we each have uh, some breakout rooms that we can go to.